Hi guys and welcome to episode 17 of my knitting podcast. My name is Marlene and I'm a knitter based in Germany, which I sometimes forget to introduce myself. I don't know why that is, but now you know, that's just two things about myself. Uh, through watching these videos, I think you'll you get a quite a good idea about who I am as a knitter, uh, but not maybe not as much about who I am as a person. I do sometimes do um, travel um, vlogs, and I've been talking about a bit about my experience with mental health, um, or more so mental illness, and uh, my experience um, working in academia. But mostly this channel is about knitting, also all things yarn. And um, yeah, I'm happy to say that this is already episode 17. I've got a couple of things with me today to talk to you about. I don't actually have any uh, finished objects with me. Um, but first things first, I wanted to say something about the yarn stash that I did and talk about in the last episode. I did it over on Instagram and I just wanted to say thank you to all the lovely people that showed some interest in the yarn that I was offering. Um, to the stash from my stash. Um, it was a really positive experience seeing that I, um, since I had made this purchase decision uh, with the yarns, um, and then just, I don't know, wasn't looking forward to knitting with them as much as I thought I would or didn't have any plans and because I already have an, enough yarn, basically, I um, was looking forward to get get rid always sounds so negative, but like lighten my stash a bit before doing some stash enhancement this summer at Flock Fiber Festival. Um, and yeah, so I, it just worked out really well and I was very glad to see that. So I might do it again in the future if there's ever another sweater, sweater quantity that I don't wanna knit with anymore. When it comes to smaller quantities of yarn, I've um, just taken them to a yarn swap that we do at our local knitting group that I've um, created with a friend of mine, Lydia. I have those like two knitting friends or three knitting friends now that I'm always talking about again and again. So I feel like you all know them by this point. As always, I first want to talk about what I'm wearing. This is the Brighton Tea by uh, Coco Amore Knitwear. Her name is Shara Mukhtari. Um, I did the test knit for her on this particular pattern. It is a fingering weight t-shirt with two kinds of um, colored stripe. I think you can pretty much see it quite well. I did use some scrappy yarn for this as well. And the, the, second, the second green color you'll see in another project. This is just a recent or this was a quantity that I had used or bought for something else and haven't used for that. And so I'm practically putting it in every other project that I'm doing, it feels like. Um, something that I've noticed about this uh, knit through wearing it, I've actually worn it quite a lot of times now. Um, it's starting to pill just a bit, but I don't think that's a problem. I'll just use my electric razor to um, take off the little pill pilling balls pilling balls, like balls of yarn, uh, but sometimes something I've realized, and maybe that's my fault because I put in an elastic, but throughout wearing it, I felt that it, it didn't ride up, but it was sitting quite tight in my neck. Like I said, that could be the elastic that I've put in. Actually, I'm pretty sure I'm, I made the elastic a bit too tight, which is no problem. I can just try and find the point in where I had, um, put it in and then get it out again, snip it and put in one that is a bit more elastic, a bit giving me a bit more room. But also there was a question um, the designer asked us as a, as a testing group, if we thought that there were enough short rows in this project and most people said yes. Um, through this experience, a friend of mine, she did also knit this. She asked me about if I had any more like edits or notes on this project and I told her maybe just put in like one more short row at the at the back so it sits a bit more um it doesn't ride up in the front because it's higher in the back 
like I said, if you're doing, if you're making this project just for like transparency reason, I do love this um, pattern. The designer asked us about this and I, I didn't say anything at the time or I said that it was fine and probably it is the elastic. I'm not repeating myself. I'm trying not to do that. But if you're trying, if you're planning on knitting this project, maybe think about adding one more short row or just don't put in an elastic that's too tight. I don't know if that's helpful to be honest but yeah i wanted to say that and also i'm wearing this um all the other stats about this are linked in the ravelry project page that i've linked as always down below if ravelry isn't accessible to you you can also always write down a question in the comment section down below or text me on instagram or anything like that i'm always got to answer any questions about the projects that i'm making one thing, one last thing about this project or any other kind of like a structured or striped project that I have done recently. Um, I think like two episodes ago, I was talking about how I manage if things are coming up at the same time, like short rows, raglans, uh, raglan increases or um, stripes. And I wanted to share how I manage them in my notes app. And I totally forgot to link that. So I'm editing Marlene, please remember to put in the screenshot that you've done like one month ago. Um, I think it was when I was knitting the Umbria, summers, Umbria Summer Top, but I wanted to share that it's not something I have come up with, but for the love of humanity, I can't remember who did it and why I adapted it. Might be one of the copy dolls who did it, but might also be someone else. <laughs> So I'm managing by just ticking off the boxes, ticking off the rows that I've done. It was really helpful. Like I said, I don't always do it, but especially helpful if you don't want to count rows, if you don't have a row counter or anything. Yeah, it just helped me. I just wanted to share that. But without further ado, I'm going to move into works in progress. Like I said, I don't have any finished objects to share today, but I do have quite a lot of, oh, a couple of. <laughs> um whips so this is my marco polo test knit um first i'll be talking you guys through these kind of like cone holders um i was mentioning that it was quite difficult to work with these like small cones because they don't really weigh that much so if i had put them on the ground um and was working with them they often fell um just tipped over to the side and was quite difficult for me to work easily on them. But now that I have those two cones, this one is just from Amazon and this I got from um, Sustrena Grainer. I always hate how that sounds in English. Like we in Germany, we call it Sustrena Grainer. I think I'm not sure how it's correctly pronounced, but I got this and there was kind of like a twine kind of like a yarn for gardening on here. It was just five pounds. And I think the one from Amazon was a bit more expensive, but also it has this attachment that also uh, sw swivels. <laughs> um, so it's a bit more of a like, how do you say that? Um, upgraded version. But for this, it totally works out. I just put them either on my table that's closest to me while working. And if I just pull on the yarn you can see that I mean it's not it's not the easiest to show but it just really easily winds the yarn and so I'm going to put them away but this helped me so much with the process of knitting this um, Marco Polo test knit but because having a yarn that feeds into your knitting process easily I think it's a huge deal because it can make or break the experience of knitting. And so last time I showed you this project, I had done the back side, and now I have done this part of the front. So I picked up stitches on each side of the shoulders and I knit them all the way down and then joined them, knitted them all the way down to the sides of the can you see that? The armholes, I picked up stitches here and then joined in the round. So now I've joined this in the round. It is 
finally at a point where I can just go, 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 try to knit as many rows, uh, rounds actually as possible. Actually, I talked to the designer again because I'm in the test knitting group and I actually love when test knitting groups have this kind of like um, sharing their process, the people in there, um, we're doing it on Instagram. And I've had so many experiences with test nets where people were like regularly sharing that process. And because this has been such a long knitting, test knitting process already, I really couldn't um, like, um, how do you say that? I really didn't know how far other people were in that process. I just knew from um, following Kahila and Kalila online um, with their knitting podcasts here on Insta uh, on YouTube. Um, I'll link them. I'm I'm usually mentioning them now more and more. <laughs> uh, I feel and I don't think I've linked them before, so you can find them in the description box below. But you'll probably already know them by um, being in the knitting online community, but. I know from them sharing their progress, how far they've come in their projects with the Marco Polo, but with the other ones, the other testers, not no one had shared before um, how far they've come. I've just seen in one of the um, participants' profile that she had already finished the project. And I think, and I think she's the, the first one to finish, but all of the other ones are quite, at a quite similar stage than I am and this really helped me majorly with my feeling of not doing a good enough job with this test net because now I know that I'm actually on time. I've spoke like I said to the designer again and she did assure me that there isn't actually a deadline. I don't know why I thought there was, probably because I've never done another test net that didn't have like a um, a set deadline. But this really helps me now because I'm I was trying to be more like Nitty Nutty and um, I've been regularly writing out my goals for each week. Um, it's quite addictive, especially if you're knitting a lot of stripes, which I've been recently to just be like, I'll knit one stripe a day. And then with this, I'll try to knit like one centimeter a day or two centimeters or get to the next increasing stage. and. That's what, what I had done with this. And I was quite happy with my um, progress, but still I thought the um, like mid-July was the deadline and now I can probably take until the end of July to finish this. And the designer reassured me that that is not going to be a problem. But yeah, um, so my laptop has just turned off. I'm not seeing my notes anymore. So I'm just trying to freestyle it now. My next work in progress. It's actually something that I haven't shared on here. I just shared the, the yarn that I'm going to use in my last podcast episode. And this has never happened before. Uh, like, don't worry, it's not a finished object yet, but I've never made this much progress without sharing it in between since like regularly doing the podcast, I think. So this is the straw pipe sweater. I'm going to put it on like this because I have already finished one sleeve. Um, that's what it looks like. Um, I'm going to share about the yarn first. This is pumpkin spice, this is hot cocoa, and this is terracotta. All three are from Olivia and Oliver Fiber Fibers. Um, they are in the Merino DK base. And then with the main color. This is Sunness Garden Double Sunday um, and then the kind of like olive-y, grayish gray olive color. This is the Sunness Garden Sunday and it's held double. And the name is something like grayish olive, <laughs> what is it called actually? Stovid Olive Green? Olive Green gray olive green, something like that. I'm going to link it down below and I'm also having all of the information um, written down in my <laughs> Ravelry page as always. I've just finished this sleeve today, um, which means I only have one more sleeve to go. And the thing I'm actually most proud of with this is that I have already 
sewn in all the ends in here, at least the ones in the body. Um, I'll finish this project with weaving in the ends in my sleeves, of course. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy with this project. The with this project, the feedback on Instagram has been huge as well. So many people want to make this project or are starting to make this project right now as well. And um, when I posted about this, people were, uh, yeah, their feedback was really positive. <laughs> so I'm really, yeah, looking forward to wearing this. Um, actually, my partner said that this might be his favorite make of mine yet. Uh, which I do think says a lot because I've made a couple of sweaters by now. Um, but yeah, I'm really looking forward to making this. The one uh, adjustment or like um, modification that I've done is that I'm not changing colors in the sleeve. With the um, regular pattern, she has a different color for like three stripes on the sleeves. I've not done that because this was kind of like a stash project. I only bought the terracotta um, yarn by Olivia and Oliver Fibers. All of the other yarn I already had in um, stash. I spoke about this a bit more at the end of my um, last episode. But yeah, because of that and because I couldn't come up with a color that I really want to have in this project as well, I just went with the colors I had and I really like this and I can't wait to see um, some of the versions that my friends are making um, and also match with Chelsea. We, <laughs> I think when we last spoke via or our like regular FaceTime dates, <laughs> we like right before that, we we're both talking about what we wanted to make at that point, And we we're both like stripe pipe sweater. It wasn't like we didn't speak about it beforehand. So it's I love when something just comes up naturally like that, because a lot of times someone will be speaking about a project. I'm like, I want to do that. And the other, other times I'll be inspiring someone else to make something. But this time around, we'll just like both just wanted to make it and cast on in this like FaceTime, which was funny because she was like, yeah, get it on your needles. She already had started it. So I'm looking forward to matching when I'm going to be um, at hers in a couple of weeks. Um, we're actually, or I decided, I don't know if she wants to do it, but I decided to take part, part in the Match Along 2023, which is um, put up by Emily Curtis. Um, she has a knitting YouTube channel as well, which is, I think, Gently Chaotic Knits. And Maya, um, her Instagram handle is what Maya makes. And um, I'm looking forward to meet her in at Vlog as well. <laughs> I've been talking to her on Instagram a bit. And yeah, they put up this match along because they are friends. They work at the La, La Mercerie shop. Words don't come easy today. <laughs> Um, but yeah, uh, I did kind of like, like enter the match along uh, through Instagram while posting about this. But yeah, I think that's enough on that sweater. Moving along, talking about the Summer Stripes cowl that I'm hosting with my friend Lydia over on Instagram. It has started as of yesterday. Today is Saturday, the 1st of July, and it started yesterday and it's going for two months. And I did start, I did cast on, but like I said, I want to finish my stripe pipe, the second sleeve. I wanted to finish the first sleeve and get on with the second sleeve as well. And I'm focusing on the Marco Polo, like trying to focus on it a lot so I don't get stressed out by the end of my time with it. And I don't want to take it because of the cones. I don't want to take it to the Pacific Northwest when I'm going, but yeah, I did cast on. It's nothing much yet, but it's going to be the Portobello um, sweater by, again, Cheryl Mokhtari. Um, she's also sponsoring Arkel, thankfully, and the yarn has also been sponsored. I'm going to talk uh, about it a bit in my acquisitions part, I think, so I'm not going to mix that up. But yeah, I started the Portobello sweater, another pattern that I wanted to make and that just really fit in well with the theme that I then came up with my friend for this cowl. 
And so that's going to be my next knitting project, I think, whenever I, I finish the stripe hype sweater. I did make a swatch with this. If you can tell, there is my 4NMT swatch and then there's this. The Portobello sweater actually asks for uh, a bit thicker stripes, um, if you know knitting. I don't think I'm giving away too much about this pattern to tell you like these are two stripes, uh, two rose stripes. The pattern asks for four rows and then for example the uh, 4NMT uh, was made with a two and the stripe pipe sweater is made with eight rounds and like i said if you like zoom into the picture and you can read knitting you can tell how many stripes that is so i don't think i'm giving away too much but actually this project idea the portobello sweater was inspired by a Cezanne sweater that i had seen um a couple of months back and I really like the look of, but I did hold myself from buying something from a uh, high street. I mean, I, I wouldn't, I mean, yeah, they are fast fashion in a way. I mean, they're not Shein or anything, but they are still, uh, um, yeah, a fast fashion brand, I would say. Not to step on anyone's toes, but I didn't want to buy a knitted garment when I myself am a knitter. <laughs> I can make it myself. Um, probably not like saving any money with it, especially not because I'm spending so much time making it, but because I love spending the time on it. I just thought maybe I can find a pattern that looks at least similar. And because the pattern has thicker stripes and it also, it is constructed differently, but it looks, it has the vibe that I was going for, right? And so I did try with this um, gauge swatch to see how I liked the, yeah, the smaller stripes. And I realized I think the original pattern is already great as it is, and I'm not going to make the stripes this thin. Um, that's just because I don't wanna have only like very thin stripes. Like I said, the my Marseille sweater has quite thicker stripes. The stripe hype is quite thicker stripes, but I think the Portobello is going to be a nice in-between of the two um, versions. And so, <clears throat> I'm making that as the pattern suggests and not making any adjustments, at least not that I know of right now. Um, moving on, these were my two, or these are my two and a half focus projects. And now I have two more projects that I've been working on whenever I've got some time for it. This was actually something that I worked on on the airplane quite a bit and then when I was uh, chatting to my mom on the phone or maybe watching a series with my partner at night this is um, going to be a gift knit this is kind of like the body speaking about stripes I'm a bit stripe crazy right now but yeah this is going to be the body of the Rick Morris summer blouse for my cousin um, as you can see, I'm not doing the kind of like Rick Morse um, lace pattern. So it, I, I'm just using kind of like the stats and the numbers of that pattern that I have to create a t-shirt for a six-year-old. I'm just knitting on it whenever I have some time. Um, and I don't yet know, I don't know yet when I'll be giving it to him. It would be nice to give it to him during the summer so he still has some opportunity to wear it but also he could wear it in the fall and winter just with something over it. Um, it's in the drops bell and yeah I really like that yarn for my foreign MT so I did get some more and now I'm making a gift for him. And my fourth and a half like I did just do one German short row on that Portobello sweater so it doesn't really count yet but yeah um the next work in progress this is the barber shawl by Gregoria Fibers it's it, it's getting quite crinkled whenever I put it in the bag but this is what it looks like I think I made quite kind of like from maybe here to here this is the progress that i made 
Uh, I took it on the airplane with me going to London and then now I've just, it's become my walking project or kind of like commute project. I have actually uh, memorized the um, pattern repeat, which is making this uh, a quite nice project for on the go. And also it's not yet too big for me to be able to take it. Um, but yeah, that's everything on this. The yarn is Pernilla by Focolana. The color is Chai. Everything else I've already mentioned in my last episode. And I'll probably show you this when I have a lot more progress and then maybe whenever I finish it. Actually, one thing I forgot to say about the stripe pipe sweater is that I was actually able to take that to the conference as well and knit on it quite a lot. That's why I've yeah, I've been like made so much progress as I have. That's actually because it was such a mindless, like just in the round stockinette throughout the whole body. And the color changes were quite um, far, like eight rounds was quite a long time to go without changing the color. So it was quite in a mindless knit and that was super nice. And so that's why I took it. And because I wanted to make some more progress in it, I just wanted to have it as a finished object, but also it's been such a joy to knit on. Yeah, that's what I wanted to say. And now moving on to Yarny Acquisitions. So I'm going to show you the things that I got in the UK, specifically in this one shop in Brighton and then in two yarn shops in London. But then I also have some online shopping, uh, yarn online shopping that I wanted to share with you guys. So I'm going to start chronological order um, in Brighton at Yak, which is, I have, actually I've got their card. It was such a lovely shop. I really enjoyed going there. I like the, um, the woman who was working at the shop, she was really nice and we chatted for a bit. And going to the UK, I just wanted to get some things that I couldn't get here. That was like my focus of shopping <laughs> for yarn. That's why I got the John Arben Exmoor sock for ply in these like two beautiful colors. Uh, the green is called Aggie and the red is called quick beam quick boom no beam quick beam it's actually really difficult to to tell um you can't really see um but that doesn't really matter and i just love the idea of making socks with something else than super washed merino uh for once it's 60 percent eczema blue face super wash i mean it's still super wash which this was important to me because if I do have any scraps, it's going to go into my scrappy blanket, which I only use soft, no, super washed yarn for to be able to wash it in the washing machine. So 60% Exmo Blue Face, 20% Corridel, and then 10% of Swart Bless, Swart Bless, Swabless, can't really pronounce that, and 10% nylon. So I do think this is going to be such a nice, sturdy sock yarn, maybe a bit scratchy, but we'll see. Uh, in the winter, I actually like to wear my sock, my hand knitted socks over some of my regular cotton socks, just because it's actually something my friend taught me. That's how my feet will be, I don't know, like insulated the best, don't know. I just realized through just wearing my my wool socks that my feet still got cold, <laughs> which, like I said, I can't tell you the chemics behind it, but she told me that I should do it like that. And I've been doing it in the winter um, and it worked out really well. But yeah, these are from John Arden Textiles. So they're a brand from the UK, specifically from Devon. They have a mill there I've seen in, I think it's, Laura Penrose latest um, YouTube video that she went there uh, to the open mill weekend, I think it was. And yeah, I, I got this. I was really happy with the colors. I think they would make really cute colored socks. They each have, um, I 
think it's 50 grams. Yeah, so it's 100 grams, which is enough for a pair of socks for me. I could even get a pair of socks out of one of those. And maybe I'll do like just one of those with like an accent color from the other one. Maybe that would work out. I just have to make sure the leg isn't too long. And with the 100 gram skeins that I usually get in like hand dyed sock yarn, I never have that problem because I always have too much and I can just like knit as long or as much as I want or like to choose the texture that I want to do. And then the leftover is just going into my blanket. But if I don't have enough from the get-go I'll have to think about something that will work out but I will and I'm so happy that I got something that's so local and um, I've heard actually I've heard quite great things about so yeah that's my first thing that I got I'm going to put it away and the second thing that I got at Yak was actually uh, another sock set and I don't think I've seen something like this before <laughs> and you guys This is Beehive Yarns Bellini Audrey Classic Sock Set. It has a main skein of yarn and three minis, which I just thought were so cute. This is kind of like a orangey, beigey and rusty color. And this main skein is just beautiful. I'm usually typically not a pink or like rosé person at all like there is not one single thing in my house that is pink but this skein and like sock set just screamed like please take me home and this was not cheap but I still took it home with me um, so the Exmoor sock were 10 pounds each which I think must be around like 12 yeah about 12 euros I think which is not cheap but also not super expensive i think for like a special skein of yarn um and i tend to go for like a bit more special sock yarns because i don't i'm not able to knit as many socks i mean i'm only able to knit so many socks right and I just want to make it a really great experience when knitting them. Talking about the price, I know that I'm something like, sometimes I'm starting to say one thing and then I'm distracted by something else and not finishing that one sentence. I realized that and I'm trying to be better about it. But the price for this was £42, which is, like I said, not cheap. I think it might have been overall... 62 and I think my credit card like <laughs> receipt said something about like 72 euros so it was about 10 um, the rate wasn't or isn't great at the moment I don't think so this was my first yarn shop purchase and I think I did contain myself there were a lot of other things that I would have loved to get but um, yeah this has 320 gram mini skeins and 100 gram skein so this is technically or not just technically but this is 160 grams um, of hand dyed yarn which the price therefore I think is justified so this was everything that I got at Yak um, the second store that I went to was Loop London which is in the Camden Passage in Islington in London and I only have one thing left with me that I got. This is their logo, which I think is so cute. The whole aesthetic is quite cute in their store. And I did get a one mini skein and a tote bag for my friend, um, Lydia. I feel like I'm saying her name as often as I'm saying something like DK or yarn uh, in my videos but yeah I got one mini skein for her and one for me and this is the Peepees braids um, which is interesting because my my mother-in-law she's really majorly into Pippi Langstocking or Pippi Langstrumpf and this is um, Vilen 
for Loop London and these mini skeins. I've never seen something being kind of like wound up like this and sold. So it wasn't, it also was quite, um, um, quite, quite great price. I think this was about five pounds. And because I do have my scrappy yarn stash and my blanket, I think this was going to be a beautiful kind of like a special highlight for that blanket but also it could be a highlight color if I ever and I probably will make my my mother-in-law some socks. I can see myself like putting in a couple of um, just like stripes on that sock and I think yeah it's 20 grams Pippi's braids <laughs> I thought that was so cute and for my friend I got something that was a bit more on the like rusty orange side um, and one of the like signature tote bags I got for her. So yeah, that was the second shop. I didn't get any like full skeins of yarn, even though there was uh, quite a few special like local yarns as well. And they had Jameson and Smith's, which I wanted to try, but I didn't have any like projects planned because I know most of these things I can also get via online shopping. And I just wanted to restrain myself if I didn't feel like the super, like a, a super urge to get it. I just wanted to contain myself and be like, that's okay. I'll get it another time. I might come back, you know? And so that's what I got at Loop London. And the third shop that I went to is, or was, My ivory room and uh, first of all I got this beautiful tote bag as a gift from my friend Valentina she owns the shop and um, if you saw my vlog you saw what we did that day so if you haven't seen that you can go back one video I posted a London vlog and kind of like book haul uh, there and yeah we had such a lovely time she took me to her favorite pizza place for lunch we went to a bakery and got a coffee together we went to a bookshop we just like strolled around Chiswick now I know it's called Chiswick not Chiswick but I mean can anyone like pronounce English like city or county or anything names <laughs> without butchering them I can't uh, but yeah Chiswick uh, or whatever I'm probably still not saying it right but yeah it was such a lovely place to be and although it's a bit like further out it's a lovely area to explore and of course there are other yarn shops in the city and for example Woolly and Wild um, I hope I'm saying that right would have been another one that I would have liked to visit um, but actually I'm so content with the the places that I was able to go to and because I didn't have much time I was really proud of myself for walking so much or oh, not proud because I, I I enjoyed it as well but yeah I'm content with the places that I was able to go to and now for the thing that I got at Valentina's place um at her shop it's actually the pattern that I decided to make with this is coming out today it's the camisole number nine by my favorite things knitwear and I got a yarn that I have seen Valentina use <laughs> and I think Florence also designed her Tombow tee with this um, in collaboration with Valentina I don't want to say something that's not correct but I think that's that's correct um, and the Pasquale Safira is something that she has said so many great things about and I was able to touch the kind of like swatch of it and she's so right this is such a nice yarn I actually got <laughs> four of this because I wasn't sure um how many I would need I was kind of like stalking the comment section underneath uh, my favorite um things knitwear's posts about this camisole to find out how much I would need but I thought for like a top I was going with three Valentina said go with four like be sure 
yeah and um she she actually didn't want me to buy anything because most of the yarns i have to be honest are um a bit cheaper in the in germany if you're paying with euros it's just because of the pounds and euros exchange rate that um technically wouldn't have made much sense for me to get some of the yarns especially the yarns that are from germany at her place but i wanted to support her like i love her concept she's doing such a nice job there and i knew i wanted to make the camisole and i think this is going to be such a beautiful color can you like imagine it i can and uh, choosing this color actually came from her gifting me some of her scraps. She used this for her tumbo tea, I think, for the for the stripes. And she wanted to. She asked me if she could give me if she could give me some of her scraps because she knew I'm doing this scrappy blanket, which I thought was such a cute thing to do. And she g gave me those two, um, which this is I think seashell. From she it's so great when you put them just like in there um, merino fingering in yeah in shell uh, was from the warm neutrals I think collection from Olivia and Oliver fibers and uh, yeah she just asked me if she could give that to me or give it like give it to me to take home with me for my scrappy blanket and I said yes of course you can thank you and now uh, because this isn't super washed um, I'm not yet sure if I will use it in this project. She just said that she's not going to use it anymore um, because she's finished that project. But if I don't need like four and a half skeins, I would probably make something like the penny gloves with it. This is a <clears throat> virgin wool and uh, silk mixed, 75 and 25%. Um, and I'm quite sure that I won't be using all of it <laughs> for the camisole. And so I'm going just going to come up with something for the rest of it. But yeah, thank you so much for recommending this yarn for me and gifting a bit of extra yarn with that. Um, which accidentally was the same dye lot. So I'm really happy with that. And um, yeah, like I said, I wanted to get something because I couldn't decide on the other things, I actually wanted to get some sock yarn, uh, which also I can get here. Kremke Sol Wool is actually run, one of the um, NBC yarn. It's actually one of the more um, accessible yarns for me here. I often um, order from them. Actually, a friend of mine, she's head of uh, design for uh, the brands. And so... Uh, I've been I, I collaborated with them before, so these are brands that I that are quite accessible to me. But Pasquale, I've never seen in Germany as well in a shop. Maybe I've just never noticed them. But yeah, I just wanted to find one project that I got from her, and so this is my camisole quantity, and I'm really looking forward to cast that on. So moving on to another online shop um, haul, online shopping haul. Um, I did order with Olivia and Oliver for the terracotta yarn that I needed for my um, stripe pipe sweater and I got two more things. I got this classic sock in English toffee. This was a colorway that had always spoken to me and I wasn't sure how it was going to look like knitted up in a sock. But I can see myself either knitting socks for myself with this or knitting them for a family member that is uh, going on a trip somewhere. I don't want to say too much, but I think they could. This colorway could like really fit with the whole trip, like itinerary. <laughs> I don't know. This probably doesn't make much sense, but yeah, I thought it would be a nice uh, yarn to add to my stash. I don't have anything similar to this. Um, yet and so I got this and I got another DK sock set this this is a feather and cacao I spoke about this before um, this I got for a sock set for my partner he doesn't know this yet but I will make him some socks again I made him a pair of socks with another DK weight sock set from Olivia and Oliver before I used the Elleflower and 
I don't know the name of the like white that was like going with that but I made him a set of socks before with that and re he really enjoys them he's been like not now because it's the summer but throughout the winter he's worn them quite a lot um I mean I only gave them to him on Valentine's Day so in February but since then when it was cold enough he has been wearing them and so I thought that was be that would be a nice thing for him obviously I need to make them bigger than for myself and just for like not losing the fun with them I thought like DK socks are the way to go and I think it's just such a cute colorway and because his birthday is in November and then Christmas is already going to be in December I thought I'd make my life a bit easier and choose a <clears throat> a DK weight sock also because I do need to still make him that sweater <laughs> which I got him this I made him this like baby sweater like petite mini sweater as like a um, Christmas tree ornament and as a promise keeper that I'll be knitting him a sweater um, I made up my mind about the pattern a couple of times but I still have it up here in one of my um, IKEA boxes I like rattan boxes I have the Alaska which I'm going to use for that and it's probably going to be the Northland sweater by Petite Knit I already bought the pattern I'm going to cast that on like after the summer and then like knitting it maybe until December or something like that um, I'm like thinking about can I gift the sweater to him if I've already gifted him the yarn last year <laughs> I mean it's going to be a lot of work uh, I mean he doesn't mind but I've promised to him it's going to be finished by the end of this year like around Christmas time this year and I'm very confident that I can finish it I'll just need to like stay away from test knits get a grip on my own project planning especially for like summer finish up a couple of things and then not cast on too many other things should be doable right <laughs> but yeah no I'm going to make that come true um I'm sure and yeah I mean I showed you my scrappy blanket before I've made a bit of progress it's not like the most I've just put in like this is from my stripe pipe sweater this is from a beanie that I made um since like this was the last time that we we spoke about this so I added in a couple of things this is from like the sun a flower um colored socks that I made for my mom for her birthday she doesn't know yet so and the birthday is not until September but yeah I put in a couple of other colors now and I'm going to put in things like the terracotta as well but when um I need to weigh this actually should be about like 40 grams at least I think maybe even 50 but when she Valentina gave this to me um and I just put it in my like basket and I was looking at the colors I saw this and I was like mm, I like that like I said not usually my colors having like rosé but in socks I don't have a color preference I like just give me the rainbow right and I still have this and I think it's called antique rose from Olivia and Oliver fibers as well and now imagine a sock in these colors I would just have to hold this double I think these would make such a cute set of socks so yeah I'm using my scraps for my blanket but I'm also thinking about making accessories um, for like gifts maybe because these are like expensive well like beautifully created hand dyed yarns and I'm sure I make so many more accessories with this another yarn shop um, online shop that I enjoy ordering from is Solwool um, Krampke Solwool and um, I was pulled in by their newsletter they actually said that with every I think order over like 50 euros you were getting this um, this pamphlet with it and this was like kind of like the newest summer designs which I thought they had some cute designs in here this is the German version um, 
yeah i don't even know if i'll make anything from this like right away um but i just love having some of the magazines around i use them as kind of like a table uh, kind of like a coffee table book and because I saw that they actually had more of these in stock, I got the two ones that were like highly influenced by Knitting Traditions, Inga. She's made a couple of things from these two. I can show you the, the patterns that she's made. Or one thing that I want to make, make is the Abby Genzer. She's made it in, I think like a white and light blue and she's also made the blue clover i think it's called and i think that's another stunning design i don't know if they have like the guernsey genser i think it's in here as well and yeah just a couple of really really nice designs and so I love that I have those now. Like I said, highly inspired by Inga. And I'll just have them on my coffee table and hopefully, probably at least make one or two um, of these patterns. What the thing, the actual yarny bit that I got, I'm not going to be able to show you all of the balls, but this is the Sandesgarn uh, Line in Kits. I got these for an Anker's Summer Blouse, I can't say the word, Anker's Summer Blouse by Petite Knit. Like I said, I have a couple of more uh, skeins in there. I think I got seven and they were actually quite well priced. Um, like I said, I got one of the magazines for free uh, and um, so will they often have like 10% um, like coupon codes whenever you buy something you get another coupon code which is quite a clever move from them i've also collaborated with them in the past but this uh, all of the things i bought with my own money um except for the next thing that i'm going to show you because this is the yarn that i'm using for my portobello sweater like i said the duo is being sponsored for my friend and I, Lydia and I, as hosts of the um, cow, and uh, yeah, she, um, the marketing team at A Knitter's Wish, uh, has gifted us a sweater quantity of the duo in kit and in carry, um, and yeah, so <laughs> that's in here. Uh, the whole sweater quantity. So thanks again to Another Swish for kindly sponsoring our Cal. Um, they are also sponsoring a quantity uh, for the Portobello sweater, um, uh, a sweater quantity of the duo uh, for one of our lucky winners. So if you want to join uh, and you're based in the EU, you can do so on our Instagrams. I have a highlight in my profile which has all of the information that you need and we also have put up a shared post yesterday about all of the rules to follow they aren't many you can just knit something stripey post about it link us have a like public profile is quite important so we see that you posted something and then you're going to be entered into the giveaway um the last yarny bit but i actually got something else over the last couple of months uh, i accumulated a couple of knitting tags i already had some of the like petite knit ones and i put them into my petite knit um projects obviously these were her her old ones but i also got some of the like newer ones which i love this like gentle wash dry flat mendiff torn but i also like the idea of putting this into something that i made make for someone maybe this is going to be the one for my partner but also i've put in one or two of these like ones where you can where you can actually stitch uh in the um size that you've made or actually even put in um your 
name or um, the beginning of your name just to see who this belongs to. <laughs> I think she's made quite a clever move with those. They are really beautiful. But I, but I also wanted to get a couple of, um, a couple of tags from other companies. So if I'm not knitting a petite knit pattern, I didn't want to put in a petite knit tag. I don't know if that's like weird. Um, but yeah, <laughs> that's why I went to Etsy and got some of my own knitting tags. I don't know if you're able to see this, but this says handmade by Marlene, which is me. And I got like a whole case of these. The one thing I'd say is that they, the sides come off a bit. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, but this is something that I've seen with a lot of tags. It doesn't really happen to the petite knit ones because they're like folded to the back, which I do th just think I have to do that as well and maybe just iron over it so it stays like that. I've put in one of those into my Umbria summer top already and I'm excited to see how and if, not if, I will use them, but how I will use them in the, in the future. And another brand that I got a couple of tags from is actually Tiffany's um, brand. She's called Typical Bliss. And the like shipping from the from Canada, not even the US, was actually affordable. I just it just took some time. It just took a bit of time for them to arrive, and I actually already also got. Um, this beautiful stitch marker that I've put into my that I've put into my Marco Polo as kind of like a progress keeper and I when I saw that first I was oh, now the project fell down but yeah when I first saw that I knew I had to get one of those and I got a couple of these like tags and I really like them. And so I have a couple of tags now for my non petite knit patterns, which have been on my needles quite a lot. I think I've, I have a quite a nice balance of petite knit and non petite knit patterns. And because like I said, I wanted to do a small giveaway for one of you guys. I put together kind of like a small set of some of the uh, petite knit and typical bliss tags one of these like barber cords because I can't do a project without them. They are my holy grail. Uh, I've just given them to a friend for her birthday as well. And like I said, you need those. <laughs> and that's why I'm giving them away. Just as a card, I wanna write in a note for the um, person that's going to win them. And these are just some, um, you can see them. These are just some from Sustrine Grene. And like I said, I think there are about of one, two, three, four. I think there are five tags in here. Some typical bliss, some petite knit. And yeah, so this is going to be the yeah really small little package that I want to give away. I hope some of you will find this also fun, <laughs> like a fun idea. Um, and you want to take part in the giveaway. For that, I am going to write all the rules into the description box. Please follow the channel, like the video, write into the comment section a comment um, telling me what you're most excited for uh, this summer, like to do or to knit. It doesn't need to be a specific thing. It could be something that you want to achieve. It could be something, some place that you want to go. It could be something that you want to knit. So anything um, like that will count. And please put in hashtag knitting tags, um, just so I know that you're in the EU, you're over 18 and you want to take part in the giveaway. Like I said, it's just a small thing, like a small assortment of things, but I just thought if anyone or if some people like like sewing in the tags as much as I do and like like the neatness of the look and could use the barber cords and you get where I'm like trying to get at. 
um, I thought it was just a nice idea and just something to say thank you to. Not like no particular reason um, at all, just me being grateful to be part of the online knitting community. So yeah, if you want to take part in the giveaway, feel free to check out the rules in the description box down below. Again, I will be announcing the winner in my next episode, which I'm hoping to film again in two weeks time. Right now, that is a schedule that, I mean, works as well as it can for me. Maybe it's going to be three weeks. I'm going to keep you updated on my Instagram. I have a couple of um, family things coming up this next couple of weeks, which are some things that I'm really looking forward to, to just positive plans. Other than that, I don't really have anything to update you guys on right now. Um, I do have, I do hope you have an amazing start your week. I hope to be posting this either Sunday or Monday. So whichever day you're watching this on, I hope that you enjoy, have enjoyed watching this. If you want to tell me what you've been working on, please feel free to do so in the comment section down below. I'm always so um, grateful for everyone that wants to chat and share about their progress in the um, yeah comment section. And I'm so thankful for all of you guys that decide to tune in to my videos and I hope to see you again in the next one. Um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Bye!